Hi guys, it's Paul Seymour here, and uh, <clears throat> what I'm uh, gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna I've been starting to treat our fox population around my house. I moved here three years ago, and uh, we have quite a few foxes in the area. When when I first moved here, I was actually a little concerned about them um, for my pets. I have a, a not a really big dog. He's about 15 pounds, and a, and a a cat that's actually bigger than the dog and uh, we were concerned about you know would the foxes attack them but over time what I've grown to realize is um, they're really no no threat to our, our pets whatsoever or they anytime my dog runs out in the yard if one of the foxes is around they just take off and jump over the fence um, they don't seem to want to have anything to do with it any of our animals, including um, the cat, who's probably tougher than any of the foxes. Um, but I've actually grown, grown to really enjoy them. They're, they're, they're pretty cute. We had uh, babies last year, and we have a, a pool cover out back. And they actually uh, would, the babies would play on the, on the pool cover. It's one of those uh, tight fit covers uh, that's got springs. And the babies would bounce on it and run around and roll around and play on it like as a trampoline. It was really quite cute. And over the over time, I've really grown to enjoy uh, the foxes that we have. Uh, sadly, the one uh, negative thing is they tend to in this area get mange pretty bad. And I, the the few that I have, I have at least four. Um, I think two adults and two juveniles um, that live between my house and, and the house next to me we have like a really the the house next to me is got a the backyard's like a jungle it hasn't been taken care of in in years um and uh they kind of live in there and there's a there's a separation between it's like a little creek that runs through there and uh the foxes definitely you know are living in that area and then every night it's neat to watch them they hunt uh at the same time and you'll, I'll see them, you know, run up the, they actually cross the street and we live on a pretty main road and they will try and, you know, scare up like mice and stuff. They run up and down along the road and they all hunt to, together in a pack. So that's really neat to watch. But, um, so sadly though, we've, we've seen a few, like in the summertime, we had one that was really sick. He had almost no, no fur. Uh, and the county, they, they won't do anything for him. They won't come out. Uh, unless they're acting strange and mange is just you know it, it's it's really irritating to the foxes and eventually it can kill them if they get a really severe case of mange um, and I enjoy them so uh, you know I wanted to do something for them and see if I, I see what could be done so I started researching it and you can get a uh, medication for them it's called uh, Invermectin Ivermectin it's I-V-E-R-M-E-C-T-I-N. And it's used on farms to treat uh, a lot of stuff. This is kind of, this is what they call an off-label use if, for treating the foxes. But um, lots of research and fox rescues and everybody recommends using this. It, it's extremely effective at uh, stopping mange. So what you have to do, the tricky part is, you know, trying to make sure that each fox gets gets a portion of it and you, you don't have to catch them or inject them anything even though this this is the injectable version uh and that's the only kind that you can give orally there is a topical but don't you shouldn't use the the topical at all unless you actually ha had captured the, the the fox um which i you know i certainly don't want to do or get into trying to capture uh wild foxes but um but I am injecting it in food, and for the first, they said about first three weeks, you should treat it pretty aggressively. So every five days, they should get uh, a, a portion of this, and they they get just um, 0.2 mils, um, and this is a uh, a blunt needle, and I got this off of Amazon, and you can actually get the uh, ivermectin from from Amazon too and this was a this is a 50 milliliter bottle and they're only getting 0.2 so I mean this can treat a ton of foxes 
So um, I have four of them out here, and what they recommend is is putting out a, a couple, um, you know, don't not a huge injection, but a, just a point two in different things. And one of the things that that's worked really well um, that they recommended was hard boiled eggs. So that's what I've been using, uh, and they love it. They they scar from right down. So I do the injection right into the hard boiled egg, and I've been putting them out there every uh, every five days. So uh, this is going to be their second treatment, and um, I've been trying to photograph them to uh, see, you know, if, if hopefully we can see an improvement. I kind of wish I'd start a little a little earlier. Um, I thought they were doing better. But then I was, I, I like to, I'm a photographer, so I, I like to take a lot of pictures. And I was photographing the foxes with one of my long lenses. And when I really got a good look at them, I could tell some of them were really still suffering from mange. They're, they're not super severe cases where, I mean, when you see a really bad one, they, they're, they look like one of those uh, naked cats that have no uh, fur like they literally lose every stitch of fur on their tail and that's when you see how tiny these these guys actually are they only run about 10 pounds um you know most of them are, are fur so so that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna see if uh if we can treat our foxes and i'm gonna um keep taking pictures of them and kind of um do an update as as things go along because it's gonna take several weeks uh, i'll be treating them for a while but i'm, I'm hoping to uh really get the the group that lives around my house uh, healthy again and we'll see how that goes so uh, i'm just gonna start injecting these eggs right now and uh it's pretty easy uh the hardest part was the very first time since this isn't a sharp needle getting into the bottle of uh, medicine i did actually puncture it one time with a regular needle um, and then it gave me a spot to to get these blunt needles through. And then uh, it's pretty simple. You just, uh, the, the best way to do it is uh, to pull it down and push it back in a few times to get the air bubbles out. And that helps get your, get the air bubbles out. And I do that and then I bring it past the 0.02 and then right up to where it is. And then I just simply pull it out, pick my egg. I try and get it nice and middle, into the middle of the egg, like into where the yolk part is, because they probably just kind of scarf the whole thing down once they realize what it is. And I just shoot it in. That's all there is to it. And then for me, I save these until, I don't put them out until, uh, my fox has come out to eat right as the sun's coming down. So it's pretty much at now, now it's running around 5 45, 6 o'clock at night. And uh, that's pretty much when they are really starting to get active and they come out to eat. So that's when I put these out. And the last time I did it, the first egg, I only turned my head for a second, walked into the room, came back out, and the first fox had grabbed one and gone already. Um, so they uh, they definitely like the eggs. They say you can use sweet things too. They have a sweet tooth, apparently. Um, I haven't tried that, but they said you can put it. Uh, they 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 like honey a lot, so they said you can take like a like a lady finger or something and shoot the medication in there and then cover it with honey. Um, but the, uh, a lot of the things I read talked about eggs and I've found that the, the hard boiled eggs work really good. And the other thing is they're not expensive. I can, I can get a carton of hard boiled eggs. I don't even think these were $2. They, I think it was a, it was like a dollar, dollar 75 or something. Really inexpensive that I got the, a dozen eggs. And so that's, um, that's been my choice. And it's probably also the other good thing. It's a good good source of protein for them, and they uh, they can certainly use that. You know, going into the the winter. Now, I don't feed them regularly. I'm not. I don't want them to come dependent on me. They're good hunters. 
Uh, I actually appreciate my foxes because they are, um, I have a lot of wood piles. I do a lot of uh, burning of uh, wood. We have a wood burning stove in the winter and I have several wood piles on the side of my house. And there's a lot of mice get attracted to the wood piles and uh, you know, inevitably it seemed like every uh, fall we would get some, a couple mice in the house, but since we got our family of foxes, we haven't had any, any mice, so uh, that's been been great. And uh, so I appreciate them for that because they, they take care of my rodent situation um, that happens in the fall when the weather gets cold. So, so these are all uh, ready to go and injected. And uh, I won't be putting them out until later tonight uh, when the sun's coming down. But we'll, I'm going to put them out then and we'll uh, see how that goes. And then I'm going to keep, uh, you know, from time to time updating everybody with uh, how they're doing and try and get some pictures. And hopefully in a couple weeks we'll start seeing some really good looking fur on our, our foxes. And it would be nice to just see them not, you know, suffering. I have one who actually lays out on the on my neighbor's uh he's got a couple old uh cars that, that he's got covers on and the one fox will sun himself on the hood of the car and he lays there it's pretty cool um and he was one i actually felt the worst for because i could just see him biting on himself and and uh from the mange and you could just tell he was really uncomfortable so hopefully this will help and i'll uh keep y'all updated thanks have a great day everybody